Karibuni sana. Yes, my name is Beatrice Waitaka and I'm born again this morning. The joy of the Lord is my strength. I am what I am because of the grace of God. And this morning, I want to appreciate my spiritual parents, to thank God for my bishop, and my mom, Pastor Alice, and the pastoral teams, who puts me on track. When I lose my way, they bring me back to the way. And I want to share the word of the Lord this morning. The title of my message is Jesus, the Game Changer. Jesus, the Game Changer. We are going to read from the book of Mark, chapter 5, verse 25 to 34. The Bible says, Now a certain woman had a flow of blood for 12 years and, she, and had suffered many things from many physicians. She had spent all that she had and was no better but rather grew worse. When she heard about Jesus, she came behind him in the crowd and touched his garment. For she said, if only, if only I may touch his clothes, I shall be made well. Immediately, the fountain of her blood was dried up and she felt in her body that she was healed of the affliction. And Jesus, immediately, knowing in himself that power had gone out of him, turned around in the crowd and said, Who touched my clothes? And his disciples said to him, You see the multitude thronging you, and you say, Who touched me? And he looked around to see her who had done this thing. 33. But the woman, fearing and trembling, knowing what had happened to her, came and fell down before him and told him the whole truth. And he said to her, daughter, your faith has made you well. Go in peace and be healed of your affliction. This is a story of a woman who had an issue of blood. And before we go to the woman, just before that, verse 25, Jesus was on his way to Jairus' place. Jairus was a leader. And he had only one daughter who was 12 years old. And he came and begged Jesus that he may come and heal his one and only child and who happens to be a daughter. So Jesus was on his way going to Jairus' place. But this lady, this woman, because of what she, has gone through, she had gone through, she decided to interrupt Jesus. The miracle took place the same time as the raising of the daughter of Jairus. The daughter of Jairus was only 12 years old. Remember, these are two people. Jairus had only one daughter who enjoyed good health for the 12 years. The other side, there was a woman who enjoyed deep affliction and going through many hands of the physicians. But it, instead of getting better, she got worse because she got worse in her body and also in her pocket for 12 years. So here are two scenarios. One positive and the other one negative. But Jesus is a game changer. Wherever he went, he did good. Then I told Jesus, my daughter, my little daughter lies at the point of death. I pray thee, come and lay thy hands on her, that she may be healed and she shall live. That was a cry of the heart of the father. But the other side, there was no father. There was only a lady. Who knew that what she was going through, she could not send anybody, not even her husband if he had one, not even her relatives. She knew it is me because I know what I have gone through. It is my initiative to go because I heard Jesus is coming this way. It is my initiative to go and meet Jesus. And she had one thing in mind that today it is my day. Just as you came into this house this morning, you told God, you can see the depth of my heart. That nobody, nobody can search my heart apart from you. And you decided to come. I'm here to let you know that you will not be disappointed. If Jairus was not disappointed, at some point he was um, 
almost disappointed because somebody came and told him, don't bother the master, the girl is already dead. But Jairus had made one decision that Jesus must come to my house today because when he comes, even if my daughter is healed, if, if my daughter is dead, he'll make a difference because wherever he went, he did good. One as if he went. We learn of Jairus' daughter and the woman. They are dressed by their condition rather than their names. None of these people had a name. The daughter was called by, the, by her father's name, daughter of Jairus. But this woman, no, she, was not, she was called by her afflictions, a woman with an issue of blood. I don't know what people are calling you this morning. I don't know what kinds of names you've been given. But today, there is a game changer in the house who will change your name, change your destiny, change your condition, and change your situation. One has to feel. Twelve years of laughter Jairus enjoyed with the daughter. Versus the other woman who had 12 years of affliction. And you know, we the ladies, you can imagine 12 years, not one day, not the normal three days, not the seven days, but for 12 years. And you know, your, 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 well, your health is your wealth. All that she had, she took it to the doctors, looking for, 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 for the solution for what she was going through. That by any chance, I can be healed so I can go on with my work. Remember this, in those 12 years, she was excommunicated because she could defile people. In those 12 years, she could not attend a fellowship because she could defile people. The only solution she had, and it was that day, it was for Jesus. That if I just touch, not hold, not grab, just to touch the hem of his garment, I will be healed. Now, what is it to have an issue of blood? Well, Basically, for 12 years, this woman could not stop bleeding, perhaps due to fibroid tumor in her womb. I was thinking about the, the one that is going on in Kenyatta Hospital now. In Etonini, fist, uh, fistula, yes. And I thought, th this terminology that we are hearing now, those days they were not there because she could have sought for the best doctor and she could be corrected. But she knew one thing, that I've come to the end of myself. The only solution that I'm remaining now, it is touching the hem of his garment. But she was perpetually unclean, unable to deal with this. In the book of Luke 8.43, let me just paraphrase it. The Bible said she could not be healed. It is what was final. She could not, there was no any option. She could not be healed. And Mark 5 and 6 said, she has spent all that she had and was incurable. incurable. She could not get better, but furthermore, she grew worse. From the Jewish point of view, you could imagine anything, you, you could not imagine anything worse than a woman with an issue of blood. In the Jewish culture, any woman with an issue of blood, you are excommunicated. But even us today, we have been excommunicated because of sin. We may not have the issue of blood, but because of sin, we are excommunicated. In the book of Leviticus 15 and verse number 25, Leviticus 15, 25, the Bible says, if a woman has a discharge of blood for many days, Rather, other than at the time of her customary impurity, of it runs beyond her usual time of impurity. All the days of her unclean discharge shall be as the days of her customary impurity. She shall be unclean. That was a rule. More than the normal days, you are unclean. And you can think of this. I was asking the Lord. Therefore, this, th those ladies could not even go to church because after three or seven days, you are declared unclean. And everybody will know. Can you imagine? People give them names. But today, today, that is a game changer. This woman came to the right person in the right manner and received what she was after. And I don't know how you came this morning. Did you come in the right manner? Did you come in the right way? Did you come to meet the one who can change your story? Jesus is here. We want to look at five lessons we can learn from the story of this lady and then we'll be done. 
Number one, in the book of Numbers 15, Numbers 15, we are going back to the Old Testament. And the Lord said, and that you may remember and do all my commandments and be holy for you are God. I, please go back to verse 40. And that you may remember and do all my commandments and be holy for you are God. Not for anything else, but for you are God. Verse 41. I am the Lord your God who brought you out of the land of Egypt to be your God. I am the Lord your God. The Lord is repeating himself once and once and once again. Because he wants you to hear that he is your God. This is about, number one, is personal relationship with God. <clears throat> personal relationships with God. In the Jewish culture, they used to have a prayer scarf. I thank God because this morning, almost all the ladies here have a scarf. Yes, a prayer scarf. And this scarf, it had four corners. And every corner, there was a cord, a cord or a note. They used to call it tassel. So when you are going to pray, you cover yourself without, without a scarf. So that when you are praying, either you put it diagonally or triangle, 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 thank you. You will you'll, you'll feel those tassels. And they were a reminder of, your, of their relationship with God. That is in the Old Testament. A reminder with God. And God is so good because this lady, the one with the issue of blood, was not in those ladies. But because Jesus wanted to perform a miracle, he put inside her the touching of the, helm, of the garment. So this lady stretched forth her hand and touched one of the garments, one, one, one of the tassels. He, she, when she touched, Jesus knew that power has come out of me because somebody has touched me with a purpose. The tassels will help you remember that you must obey all the commands and be holy to your God. I am the Lord your God who brought you out of the land of Egypt that I may be your God. He's repeating once and again. Verse, number th verse 38, the same chapter. The Bible says, speak to the people of Israel. Tell them to make tassels on the corners of their garments throughout their generation. Not only for them, but even for generations to come. And put a blue thread in the tassels of the corners. Color blue was very expensive. It was only afforded by the royal people. And this morning, I am speaking to the royal people. A holy nation. The color blue. Me ni kona blue. And it was by coincidence. Is this blue? Yes, this is blue. <laughs> <laughs> this is blue. I think uh, royal blue. Yes, it is, this, is, this is to me. This is blue. Amen. Tassels are the hanging threads. A blue cord or thread was to remind or to be a representation of God. Think about it. That when you put that shawl upon you. The best people who can connect these are people from Mombasa. People from Mombasa, they buy two kangas. Mwaja wanajifunga, ingine wanajitanda. Bwana sifiwe, wanajitanda. Kujitanda niyo unafunika uso. Iyo ndio kujitanda. And those lessons must be of the same color. Not blue and yellow, the same color. Then, noted together, representative of the commandments and found on the four corners or wings of our Jewish prayer show. They are knitted together. Therefore, every prayer show that a Jewish covered he or herself with, it had four corners and it has a, tass a tassel. And that tassel, it is a, the cord, the, the nod, pale musho, to remind you of your relationship with the God. Personal, because you, could not, you cannot share a show. It is personal relationship with the God. They were to remember who they were and what they were expected, what was expected from them. Who are you this morning? Does the Lord have an expectation from you? In the book of Exodus 19, verse number 6, the Bible says, And you shall be to me a kingdom of priests and a holy nation. These are the words which you shall speak to the children of Israel. And I believe I'm speaking to the children of Israel this morning. 
that the Lord is your God and you are a holy nation chosen to be priest in the kingdom. It doesn't matter how people look at you. Before God, you are a priest in his kingdom. Their garment was a reminder that they were kingdom priests, a holy nation. They were to be like no, no other people in this whole world. Friends, we must stand out. If somebody comes to your office and requests, I want to see a sister here who is born again. Can they pick on you? We are so mixed that we don't even have a tassel. We are all the same. I'm here to remind us this morning that you need to have a tassel on you to make you different from the other people of the world. That they can see you and the what the Lord is doing in your life and they can envy and come back to the kingdom. They were in a faith relationship with Jehovah God. The woman went, but for us, we are, we are not going. For us, the Holy Spirit lives in us. But this woman had to go because the spirit was not revealed. She had to go where Jesus was. But for us this morning, we sleep, we wake up, we walk, we walk with Jesus Christ in us. And when he left, he, the Father released the Holy Spirit. Where are we this morning? We likewise must continue not a one day thing in our personal relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ. And remembering that we have been redeemed by the blood of the Lamb. The precious blood. The blood that had no blemish. The blood that had no sin. Remember you became a, a saint. Jesus became a sinner because of you and to me. In the book of Revelation, chapter 1, verse 5 and 6. Bible says, and from Jesus the faithful witness, the firstborn from the dead, and the ruler over the kings of the earth, to him who loved us and washed us from our sins in his own blood, and has made us kings and priests to, go, to his father, to his God and father, to him be glory and dominion forever and ever. Amen. The firstborn from the dead. When we was coming in the morning, I was sharing with somebody that this morning in my devotion, the Lord put in me that you, you don't die. As a saint, you don't die. It is this body that dies. And because this body came from the earth, it must go back to the earth. And I was saying to the Lord, help me to live for you. The conclusion was saying, you will live with the Lord many years than the ones who lived with this body. So it's better to know that this body, the ones that make us to sin, this body that make us to rebel against the Lord, it is going nowhere. In Mephika, it is you to overcome this body. It is you with your desires and your thoughts to put this body under subjection. Number two, he is a, he, he is a reminder of a present relationship. In the book of Exodus 15, 41, where we read, the Bible says, I am the Lord your God, who brought you out of the land of Egypt, that I might be your God. You, maybe you, you go through, you, you go through many things in life. At some point you ask, do I have a God? Does my God hear? In this verse, the Lord has repeated it twice that I am. He said, I am the Lord your God who brought you out of the land of Egypt that I might be your God. And that is, this is a choice. You can choose that you can be a God or don't, 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 don't choose it. And then he said, I am, now this is the second time, the Lord your God. He's affirming himself again that he is your God who has brought you through from last year when you lost your job due to corona. From last year, when you lost your family. From last year, when you lost your business. From last year, when you lost your health. He said, I am the Lord. And he remains to be your God. Unless you leave him, he's not in the business of leaving you. It is a personal relationship. When I saw Sifiwe, he's a present help, a present savior, a present Lord, 
and our present king. He is not just the king of the future in heaven, but he is our God presently and forever. Let's not look forward for heaven. I think if you can bring it up, Muzika. For Muzika, what will Ati nikifika binguni nitakula vizuri huko hakuna kukula kula ukiwa hapa Nikifika nyumbinguni nitaendesha gari mzuri huko hakuna magari barabara ni za dhahabu Bwana asifiwe He is our present savior And he could he could if he could feed the children of Israel for 40 years not 2 years ya last year this year corona 40 years in the wilderness During the day he gave them a cloud Basi yomeke najua during the night, he gave them a fire. Was his care buried? Two years. And we are still complaining. We have come out of the journey of faith. Mimi rinishinda. Tafadhali come back. Because in heaven, in heaven, the roads are made of gold. How many of us have seen gold? What's a here, Carol? In Mbio Carol is Kubinatano. Pure gold. How many of us have seen it with your eyes? Thank you, Bishop. Binguni, barabara ni zada hapo. Just, just, just embrace and tell your heart, me, I want to go and see my Savior. But before you see the Savior, there's an as, as, as some assignment for you to do in between now and then. Bwana asifiwe. In the book of 2 Corinthians 6.16, the Bible says, And what agreement has the temple of God with the idols? For you are the temple of the living God. We are reminded again that we are the temple. We carry the Lord, the living God. As God has said, I will dwell in them. Say, he will dwell in me. He will dwell in me. And walk among them. And walk among me. And my family. And my generation. I will be their God. And they shall be my people. Do you want to be his people? The Lord has already made up his decision. He wants to be your God. And he wants you to be his people. Bwana Yesu asifiwe. Number three. Our requirements before God. Our requirements before God. The God sworn on all four can, four corners were a reminder of the requirement for obedience. Trust and obey. For there is no other way to be happy in Jesus. But to trust and obey. The Lord needs obedience. You cannot obey to two masters. You are either on this side or the other side. This time life has become so hard. But as our confession, the Lord has not changed. None of us have slept hungry. If you have slept hungry, you are out of order. Because in this church, we give people food. So I don't see why you should sleep, sleep hungry. The Lord has blessed us in this church through our cells and through our, through our networks. Please, belong to a network. And you not sleep hungry. We can feed you for two weeks. When the food is over, you come again kwa ingine. And you not ask you any question. Because you are blessed people. Are you obedient? No matter which way they turn, they could see the, the, the tassels as a reminder to keep God's law. Friends, though we are in Kenya, we are under the law of God. Even you under the law of this nation. You cannot kill and say because you are a Christian you can kill. You are under the law of Kenya. And still under the law of our God in heaven. And you know the laws. You know the commandments. And the Lord is saying, obey my commandments. Obey my law and it shall be well with you. We are, not, we are not saved by keeping the commandments. No. But we prove our love and transformation in Christ by keeping the commandments. None of us here is said because of keeping the commandments. That is law. But we keep the commandments. We keep, we prove our love and transformation in Christ by keeping the commandments. And you know the commandments. Do they say you kill? Do they say, they say you kill? They say you should not kill. Do they say you lie? And who are we lying? And who are we killing? If you can see what is happening in our nation now, studying the Lord, 
I think we have come to the point where the Lord say, to, to, told Cain that I can hear the blood of your brother Abel calling me from the ground. That is where we are, Kenyans. The Lord is hearing the blood of innocent people crying from the ground. Because people have disobedient God. People have disobedient the law of the Lord. But the Lord is saying, come back to me. In the book of John 14, verse number 15, the Bible says, if you keep, if you love me, keep my commandments. If you love me. Do you love the Lord? Can we be the generation that usher in the second coming of our Lord Jesus Christ by loving him and keeping his commandments? You don't only love, you love and keep. Life is about two sides. Even a coin has two sides. You love and keep the commandments of the Lord. We don't have cause to remind us the days that you are living, but you have someone greater than the cause. We have someone greater and far greater than the cause. We have the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit who dwells in us. His number one mission, he came to remind us what Jesus had said. Are your ears attentive that we can hear what the Spirit is telling the church? Number four. Let us remind us our responsibility before God. Our responsibility before God. In the book of Numbers 15 and verse number 39. And you shall have the tassel that you may look upon it and remember all the commandments of the Lord and do them. And that you may not follow the halteri to which your own heart and your own eyes are inclined. Heart and eyes. These are two gates, the heart and the eyes. Friends, Job said that I've made a covenant with my eyes. They not look anything, anything that's going to defile him. Make a covenant with your eyes. Because what you see, you feed your heart. We should not be seeking after the things of our own hearts and lust of our eyes. The needs are to be inward and outward obedience. The needs are to be inwards. We don't know. Every one of us now, you have an inward need. But what we know is what portrays on the outside. It is possible someone to keep the letter of the law and violate the spirit by it. There are people who have done everything that concerns to the regulations for you to be a member of that church, the church that you come from. You keep the letter of the law. But you violate it. You violate the spirit of it. Likewise, we also need a reminder to keep the law outwardly and inwardly. And Jeremiah said in Jeremiah 31 verse number 33, this is the new covenant I will make with the house of Israel. The new covenant. This is the covenant. So this is the covenant that I will make with the house of Israel. After those days, says the Lord, I will put my law in their minds and write it on their hearts. And I will be their God and they shall be my people. What a promise. What a promise. That these laws will be put in our minds. Not at home, that you can forget it. Not in the house, not in the office, no. It will be in their minds and in their hearts. Bwana is wasifiwe. The Lord is reminding, no, finally, the, the fifth one is our redemption by God. That's the final one, our redemption by God. And you read in the book of Numbers 15, 41, that I am the Lord your God. The Lord in you will have so many other gods, but he keeps on reminding us that I am the Lord your God, who brought you out of the land of Egypt that I might be your God. I am the Lord your God. Think of the creator of the heaven and the earth. 
pleading with us, reminding us once and again that I am the Lord, you are God. Because we have forgotten. When somebody reminds you of something, it seems you have forgotten. He brought you out of the land of Egypt. You know where he brought you from. And the purpose was that he may be your God and he may be my God. The Lord is reminding the Israelites that how he got them out of the land of Egypt, it was by the blood of the Lamb. Remember the Passover? Remember the Passover? That the children of Israel had to sprinkle on the doorpost the blood of the Lamb. So that the, the angel of death, when he comes, he's going to pass over. And that's what has happened to me and you. The blood of Jesus has been our Passover. And that's where we remnant even today. How many people have gone and how people have passed on since last year when Corona struck our nation to today? But for you and me, the blood of the love, the blood of the Passover, it has made us to be remnant so that we can tell the story. It was by the blood of the love because of the masses of God. Not because that we are good, no. Oh, no, to protect ourselves. Oh, we are putting the most expensive mask? No. It's just because of the blood and the masses of God that today we are here. God provided for them through the wilderness wanderings and fed them when they were hungry and protected them all the way to the land of promise. If he did that to the children of Israel, even us, he's going to take us through to the promised land. If at all we can hold on to the faith and keep the law of the Lord. It is the same with us. The ultimate price was paid on the cross for our sins by Jesus Christ so that we no longer be a slave to sin. The Lord did it all. And he said, it is finished. He didn't say it will be finished or it is coming to be finished. He said, it is finished. For us going back to sin, it's by our own choice. But the blood on the cross Jesus said, it is finished. He now lives in us through the Holy Spirit and is with us on our journey until we reach our promised land. He has promised to walk with us until the promised land where we worship our Lord God Almighty for eternity. Buenas This morning, just as the woman with the issue of blood took an initiative and went where Jesus was. My prayer is don't be soaked in sin. And you can say, Mimi Simogonjoa, if you are a sinner, you are sick. That is the first sickness. Sin. Because let me tell you, friends, if you are not born again, there's no way you can see Jesus Christ. And this morning I know we are sick with the problems. We are sick with the sin. We are sick with the frustrations, illness, anger, name it. But this morning, I'm here to encourage you. This woman, one thing she had, therefore she was attentive. Because of her situation, she was attentive. Where can I get help? And somebody told her, Jesus is coming this way. She braved herself dressed well where she could, but made one thing before she left her house, that I don't want to see Jesus. I want to touch the hem of his garment. Because of my condition, I am defiled, I am unclean, I only need one thing, just give me way that just I go and touch the hem of his garment. And when she went, she was able to touch that tassel that was, was sewn at the edge of of Jesus' robe. She didn't want to be known because she had no name. We miss God because we want to be recognized. We miss God because of our names. We miss God because of what, who we are. But this lady knew, if I can only touch the hem of his garment, I know I'll be sorted. No wonder the Lord told the children of Israel, in that shawl, it cannot be complete without those tassels. So that when you put it on your head, when you're going to pray, or you're going around your businesses, they'll be reminding you about my relationship with you. Personal relationship with you. That, for, like today, with the, the era that we are living now, you cannot leave your house without a mask. It has come part of your dressing. And this is my prayer for us this morning. 
is you cannot leave your, you cannot enter a supermarket and you are taking your money there. You cannot enter a, a, a bank, you are taking your money there without part of the dressing. This kanguo has become a part of your dressing. That you, fika kwa mulango na sema haya, sinda part of the dressing, hodi kwa nyumba, kuchukua kanguo. We are so keen with the mask. Do you have a tassel? Do you have a tassel? That can remind you of relationship with God. That personal relationship with God. Yes, this morning we want to touch the hem of his garment. But you cannot touch him if you have a relationship with him. But the beauty with our Savior, he tells you just the way you are, come. And I'm going to bring a difference in your, in your life. No wonder he called my message the game changer. Whatever you have gone through, whatever you are going through, whatever you will go through, he is the game changer. A singer sang and said, ni meliguza. Wa meliguza na masha yake ikabadilika. Do you need to touch him today? I can encourage you, encourage myself, interrupt Jesus. Jesus is on the way going to Jairus place. Even this morning, he's on a mission. But it is upon you to interrupt him and receive your miracle. Do you need healing in your body? Cleansing from your sin and a right relationship with God? Interrupt Jesus. It is for your own good. Jesus will still go and resurrect Jairus' daughter. But it's for your own good if you can interrupt him because of what you are going through. Are you lost and like to come under the covering of his wings and receive salvation? Interrupt Jesus. No kimuguza atasimama. He's not in a hurry. You know, as we in much hurry, me mukina kunuguza evi nisha apita utanja tu skati ukonyuma. Jesus is not in a hurry. Unanda bako unacha tu vumbi. Who passed here? I think somebody passed here. But Jesus is not in a hurry because he knows somebody can interrupt him. And somebody needs a touch. Are there problems and burdens in your life and you need help? Jesus is passing this way this morning. Can you touch him? Are you not living or walking in humble disobedience? Come and touch the hem of his garment. He's saying, come. Just as you are, come and touch the hem of his garment. With every eye closed, Let's bow our heads with every eye closed. Maybe you are here this morning. You have tried everything looking for happiness and joy. I want to submit to you this morning. Try Jesus. You are here, you are not born again. If you love to be forgiven your sins and your name written in the book of life, show me by raising your hand. You are here, you are not born again. If you'd love to have a relationship with God, that He can write your name in the Lamb Book of Life. When these days are over, you live with Him more than the years you lived on this earth. Are you here? Are you there? Na ucha okoka, nonge penda ku okoka. There's a number on the screen you can write. To us, just say, I want to be born again. You are here. You are going through a hard time and you need the touch of God. Just raise up your hand as we bring this service to a close. Our Father and our God, in the name of Jesus, I want to thank you because you are a promise keeper. I want to thank you for every hand that is raised up to you this morning. We need you to your Father. We need your touch. This morning, King of all the glory, we desire to interrupt you so that you can attend to our situation, to our Father, because you have a solution for every situation, King of all the glory. And I want to thank you for the faith that your children have in you this morning, that by the raising of their hands, there is a connection, oh God and our Father, with their faith to you this morning, in Jesus' name. We know to your Father you are coming to do a new thing. You are coming to give us a story, oh God, and a testimony that one day, one time to your Father, you are going to share your goodness of what you did to us. We thank you.
and we bless you this morning. You are rest assured that you have heard. And when you hear to your Lord, you worked on our behalf. Receive praise, receive honor. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. You are blessed.